And what is up everybody, Technical Stinkers here, checking in on our little 3D print operation for the day. If you're new to the channel, uninitiated or unfamiliar, I do 3D printing here at home. Stuff for around the house, stuff to enrich my life, stuff to print and sell on the internet. What have I got going on today? Well, if you've been following the vlog episodes, I'll put a card right here or not. Not sure, I forgot the last one. But I'll find a way to put something here so you can follow the, the saga. Been printing a lot of different things, and that's what I try to do. Try to do a bunch of different stuff, you know, because not everybody's interested in functional prints. Not everybody's interested in Ozempic Vader art prints, things like that. So try to keep it fresh and inter interesting for um, kind of a variety of things. So been working, if you saw the last episode, on my ultimate desk hub, and that's kind of the majority of what I've been working on. I just pulled the thing off the gate, the thing, the gate uh, S logo, the reprint sections off the gig. So I only have one printer that's currently active, but they've been going pretty hard. I should probably plan these out a little bit better. So let's head in and see what I got. Oh yeah, kind of another reason too that I'm not have a lot of printers going. You might notice here where I kept kind of my back stock of filament. Started tidying up, reorganizing a little bit, and kind of consolidating my filament. This is from that massive Elegoo order that I got a few months ago, just to kind of illustrate how much filament I actually go through. This is all I got left. Uh, well, I got my bamboo stuff up there and, you know, all the open spools over there, plus whatever's in the machines. But in terms of backstock, I got these two five kilo spools of white. Couple partials up here, uh, about seven kilos of tan from when I was doing the uh, bone colored uh, giant skulls. Uh, and then this is all the black I have left, which is the majority of my printing is done in black. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six unopened spools of black. I've got, a, um, I think, 10 kilos coming that arrives today. Um, just kind of holding out for that big filament sponsor to come to. Come on, elegant, come on, somebody, sponsor me on filament. Is it so much to ask for a free 80 kilos of filament every month? So got a couple more hornet nests here. Been very steadily producing and selling the hornet nests. Best-selling item, again, thanks again to the person who redesigned the nest for me. But again, like I was saying, the majority of the printing has to do and pertains with the Ultimate Desk Hub. So I plan to do a separate video for the Ultimate Desk Hub. I was thinking something a little more artistic, maybe something without any talking whatsoever. Just kind of going through the design process. But so far, I've got one, two, three, one, two, three, and a half uh, copies of the Ultimate Desk Hub that I had printed uh, because again, if you, I'm not the greatest designer in the world. I'm trying to get more and more proficient in Fusion versus doing Tinkercad 2 Fusion because Tinkercad exporting into Fusion doesn't always work and uh, it really didn't for this. And a lot of the times I will take something I design and it becomes so heavily, there's so many different, uh, I guess uh, just primitives inside of the model, it starts to lag Tinkercad. And so what I'll do is I'll export it as an STL and then import that back into Tinkercad and then continue making my edits. The problem is, is that when I go to export that, a lot of the those original STLs aren't parametric, I guess is the right word. Let me know the right, wor right word is in the comments if you know at all what I'm describing or if I'm just describing it incorrectly, uh, but it's not contained within that original file. And so if I go back through, if there's like an edge in there, uh, Fusion's not gonna know how to be able to chamfer it or whatever. And so it becomes a very convoluted mess. Uh, I'd really like to get more proficient in Fusion. It's just like, um, once you get it down, the, the it seems to me that Tinkercad, it's all the basic stuff's very easy to learn. And then you're kind of capped. There's a ceiling to how far you can go in Tinkercad. But with Fusion, the ceiling's very, very high. It's just those initial things, those basic things are a lot harder to do. There's a lot more steps involved. You know, in Tinkercad, you drag a triangle into the plane and you have a triangle. In Fusion, you have to create a sketch, make a triangle manually, extrude the triangle up, and then finalize the sketch just to get the triangle versus going right there. So it's, it's like, the, there's a lot of things like that. Again, in my experience, and I know I got a lot of Fusion uh, fusion gurus in the house. Uh, so I appreciate all the help and suggestions you guys have been giving me. So again, ultimate desk hub here, gone through several iterations. Again, to kind of uh, recap, I had my under the desk fan thing and my ultimate pen cup. I forget how heavy this thing is because in the bottom of my ultimate pen, pen cup, the one I use in the bottom to add some extra weight so I don't actually knock it off. I have a just a little cube is solid tungsten though. So this weighs a kilo and this is, you know, quite heavy for its size just to give it some added weight. Uh, but I wanted to consolidate these things into one thing and also uh, consolidate, you know, the, the wires and cables just a little bit better. It overall takes up more space, but it's 
plain and it's more simplistic, more minimalistic in my opinion. And it's starting to look that way. So when I started out, I just printed like the working concept and then I started making notes on it, just kind of writing on here, writing on here with a little acrylic pen and I made it into two parts so I can print these on the bamboo to get a little bit of better quality. Pen cup becomes a square. This is for the MagSafe. Um, and you say I have notes on here like too big or move it up one millimeter, move it sideways two millimeters, put a hole here for your keyboard wires. Cause again, that's why I like printing these things. If you are, a, if you're subscribed to my channel, it's safe to bet that maybe you've seen uh, videos from zero.cmd, fellow 3D printer. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. Follow him over there. His, his videos are like Rembrandt, man. They're, they're beautiful. He puts so much effort into it. Either that or he just knows how to do it and he's just a savant at videos. But subscribe to his channel. Well, what are you doing watching me and not him? Watch him. Uh, but he was had put out a video recently about how much filament he throws away. And it, it, the video is because he does so much prototyping, print and pitch, I call it. Um, that he just ends up throwing away a lot of filament because of just that practice versus me and I've described before in the past versus meticulously designing something and, and getting it absolutely perfect before you print it. It's a lot of filament, um, so it's, it's difficult to try to get it perfect because uh, you know, I probably should try to do that for the big prints. Uh, but for something like this, I don't know what kind of problems I'm gonna run into because like when I printed this out and was trying to place it, I'm like, oh yeah, I should put a hole here for my keyboard wire or I need to move this a little bit. You know, I didn't measure correctly or I didn't measure from the outside of the circle instead of from the center of the circle, et cetera, et cetera. Iteration one here, like, you know, the speed controller I was gonna put as a square. Ultimately, I decided that it was just so too difficult to try to secure it in place. I had a little trap door in the back and it was just a whole complicated mechanism. In the back, you know, I was like, well, do I need a grill? as an intake for the fan, because if I put this together, it's just gonna be pulling a vacuum the whole time. It's gotta get the air from somewhere, but it's got a bunk hole in the bottom so it can escape, uh, so an escape hatch to the bottom of the desk. So this is iteration number one. And then when you get into iteration number two, you'll see that there are some notable changes. Like I've got this little phone stand on here and you might say, well, Matt, didn't you go on and on in the last episode about how you were switching your phone to MagSafe and your pop socket guy or whatever? And like, yeah, well, I got a pop socket here it's a MagSafe pop socket. I'm, my thinking is MagSafe pop socket means you could put it on here. You can't, that's not how it works. You read the damn fine print. It's like, if you wanna charge it on MagSafe, remove the magnet, who's gonna do that? I'm not gonna do that. It is convenient to have a magnetic pop socket on there though, because mine would keep falling off. So if I really, really need to have the MagSafe, I've got it in here. And if I ever turn this into a product, it's one more thing I can advertise, but I put the little phone stand on here in case I just come in, throw the phone down real quick. MagSafe goes, installs into there, wires go on the inside. Notable difference is version one had no spaces for USB storage because I got a lot of USB drives for all my 3D printing stuff. So I put them in here. I actually put them originally, they were straight up and down. Did I throw away the old one? Oops, this is version two. So this is version two with the USB drives in here, but since I'm printing it like this, they need support. They're not gonna be able to print on their own. And you can see down inside of here, all those little supports, and man, they're a pain to get out. And so on to version three, I just put them at a 45 degree angle. And that way, because when I'm printing it like this, it doesn't need any supports to do it. it. Still holds the USBs in place. Kind of a nice little, I guess, better aesthetic. I don't know. Practice on the heat set inserts. You'll see here, put the heat sets in, and I was like, oh, I need to chamfer the outer holes that the screws are going into. So I did that on version three and added a hole for my keyboard wires there so the, the keyboard wires can go inside and then they can escape out the hatch down underneath the desk. That leaves me with the final version here. Uh, the other half's still printing. It's got, it's got, I just started it an hour ago. It's got 18 hours to go because the final version, I'm printing very heavily. Four wall loops, 20% infill, each half takes a kilo. Uh, so this is, it's pretty solid. Uh, and it, it kind of needs to be because it's got to support the weight of this big chunky fan on the inside. The other side's got to support the weight of like the phone. And I wanted to just have some heft to it. Now, one thing I was trying to get away from and I cleaned my build plates so much, but it's such a big print. I can't believe it. I got a little bit of lifting here. It's very good, probably gonna be impossible to see, but there is a little lift and it kind of translated into this very unsightly line here. I might try to reprint this side because this one went on the A1. I also got some pretty bad ghosting. You see that kind of line here between these two holes 
and you can really tell up here where it was printing uh, the holes for the screws. Probably the worst ghosting, I think that's the term ghosting, that I've ever seen here, here, here. It's all around because this is the very top of the print and it kind of ruined the chamfers. Now the screws will hide that, but I was like, okay, well, let's just try it out. So I got everything bolted in, works fine, nice and solid, bung holes in place, added a little tray on top in case I want to put like things like my microphone and whatnot. And I'm thinking there'll probably end up being a version four of this where I add in like more of these USB ports and stuff like that for just for charging, uh, not so much for data. And that would be very easy to do. Put a USB splitter, mount it on the inside, probably mount it up from underneath and just have like a row of chargers on top. So this is going well. It's just been eating up a lot of my time because I'm designing it all. Plus with Hornet Nest orders coming through, having to print those kind of intermittently because I'm doing it all on the bamboos, which is kind of unfortunate slash unfortunate because like the dog project we've been wanting to work on, the Dummy 13 dog, haven't been showing it much love. Although did I did yesterday, uh, I'll put it, I'll put it right here. Um, the spine section, because I'm gonna have to go through, I don't want the same issues to happen on this dog that happened on the Big Dummy 13 with the ball and socket joints, because printing it very, very large, if you saw that video, check it out. If you've seen anyone else print really Big Dummy 13s, you know they have a, you have a problem getting the ball in the socket. It just comes with the nature of printing very large. Uh, I wanted to avoid that, and so I'm thinking I'm gonna do some like redesign on it in, so say I will cut off this part, this one side of the socket, and then just add a couple screw holes on the inside. And so that way I can just place the ball in the socket and then put the extra piece of the socket on here and then screw it in to tighten it and hold it. But when I do that, uh, I'm gonna do that everywhere but this one section. Cause I just, I can't, I think in my mind, this is gonna be carrying a lot of weight here, this spine section. And looking at it, I don't often, I have a lot of dogs. I never often see my dogs. <laughs> if, you, if your dog does this, it's a pretty big vet bill. And I, I would know. Actually, my one dog is often <laughs> doing this because he's trying to suck his own. Calm down, Matt, calm down, lucky bastard. Anyway, I've decided that the spine section doesn't need to be, uh, doesn't need to articulate. And just in my view, because if you keep it nice and straight, then I can articulate and pose the dog just like by, you know, changing his leg orientation, you know, changing his knees and, and hips and things like that. So what I've done is I'll put it right here. I went ahead and fused these sections together just very simply and then exported it in. This piece I'll have to do on the Giga because I'm trying to do it a thousand percent. I think that's the right size for this dog. And that kind of gives me a good idea of the scale. Overall, about a kilo's worth of filament, not too bad. I'm gonna do all of this in PLA. I'm not doing that pet G PLA hybrid sort of thing again especially if I'm uh, modifying the ball and socket joints to kind of just place them and screw them tight. I think that'll go a lot cleaner. Um, remains to be seen. If not, it's another feather in the hat of information on how to assemble 3D prints, and then maybe you can join along for that journey. So if you want to kind of follow along in that and see how it works out, be sure to subscribe to the channel. But going to be working on that today. At a minimum, I want to get that part printing the big spine section because the rest of these will go pretty quickly. And I've already verified that all the other pieces at a thousand percent will fit on a Cobra, uh, if not anything smaller, like a bamboo flash forwards, et cetera. Finally over here in the land of the big S, you saw the big S, I'm printing from my driveway gate. I have the one here, the boom, accidental boomerang, unintentional boomerang that I printed. Printed the replacement parts for it. I added glue to the bed of the Giga. I really don't like using glue stick or hairspray or anything on my print beds. I, re I really hate doing that because um, it, it just becomes this like mess. And when I see people, people use hairspray, it just drives me up the wall because it's like all those aerosols just kind of floating around and getting in the gears and stuff like that, uh, especially aerosol based ones. Um, cause you're, you know, spraying half hours. If you take it outside and spray it, then sure. But spraying it in place, yikes. So I used glue stick. I probably would, should have used some of that, uh, that bed adhesive uh, liquid uh, that got sent over. I think it was Flashforge sent it with their machine. They sent, it's like an adhesive liquid. If you've got a good recommendation for a good liquid, let me know in the comments below because I really don't like using the glue stick because it is inconsistent. It leaves glops and globs and stuff like that. And I know when, once the bed heats up, it kind of evens out, but really prefer not to use that, especially if this wasn't gonna be painted or coated in resin. It leaves this like residue on there. Not, a, not much of a fan, but I got the pieces off. And again, Orange Storm Giga, she's back, baby. Surface finish, crispy clean. 
you know, it's a big printer, it's a big nozzle, so it's not gonna be like ultra fine where you can never see it. But as far as consistency goes on, on the top surface layer, beautiful, this thing's rock. And I mean rock solid. So the idea was to coat this in resin and put it on my gate. And I've had no less than 5 billion comments about how the PLA is gonna melt in the sun. And at first I was thinking like, well, it's not gonna matter. I'm gonna paint it. Um, you know, I'm gonna coat it in resin, paint it, whatnot. I really wasn't considering the heat as much as I was just the UV. And now it's starting to, it's starting to get to my, it's, it's, a, it's a virus in my mind thinking like it is gonna melt, it is gonna melt. So my thinking is either one of two things. I'm gonna put this outside in a sunny spot and see if it melts or coat it in resin first and then put it outside in a sunny spot and see if it melts. And I'm thinking I'll coat it in resin first because I'm gonna need some practice coating in resin way back, way back when I would build a cosplay costume. We're talking like 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago. Oh my God, I'm gonna die soon. Anyway, 20 years ago, when I was doing cosplay costumes, before cosplay was a cool thing, uh, I did a lot, I used a lot of auto body resin on Pepakura, so like paper mache essentially to make it hard. Um, and that, I did a terrible job because it would drip and then you need to mix it with Bondo to try to thicken it up and it would always drip. I would never be able to get like, just an even coating on there. They don't really make a way to spray it that's not expensive. So I think I'm gonna get some resin and then try my hand at just gingerly and gently coating, just easy coats. And it'll take like probably 10 coats to get a significant em enough amount on there before I can paint it, because I do not want to sand it. Another cool suggestion came in of printing a mold and just doing a resin pour. And I'm like, that's a fantastic idea. That would just take an enormous amount of filament to print the mold. Cause think this already took two, a little over two kilos to print this big S. If I printed a mold big enough for that, uh, you know, I'm probably looking at five, six kilos for a one time kind of thing. I'm never gonna print a big S again. Uh, plus when you release it from the mold, resin from a mold, even if I use mold release or whatever it is that will allow uh, to create that barrier, I imagine the mold would be destroyed. Uh, it's not gonna be a silicone mold for sure. Uh, and that's typically what you make molds for resin with, not plastic. Uh, and I'm not gonna coat this thing in uh, silicone because then you'd lose all the detail. It wouldn't give you the nice sharp edges. So uh, not too sure about that. If you've got a better suggestion or a, you know could compound on that suggestion, because it is a cool idea, let me know in the comments below. So that's what's going on in the 3D print space for today. I've got a couple pieces of hardware on the way as well and really looking forward to working with those. Channel's getting bigger, getting more attention, getting money for stuff now. So <laughs> that's good. Uh, I suppose. Still waiting for that filament sponsor though. So come on, Sunlu, Elegoo, somebody. Come on, just make it rain, make it rain. 80 kilos a month, that's all I need. Let me know what you're working on in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it's a nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals, see you next time.